Uh, but the story that just came out right now, O.J. Simpson's dead at 76, prostate cancer, went into hospice, now he's dead. And now we're reliving that moment uh, with a guy that I did not know back then but knew of. Uh, Mike Rowe, that's the best transition I got. Thank you. Yeah. Mike Rowe, Seamless. from Mike Rowe, it was, as far as I can tell, I'm going to listen to it back. Uh, Mike Rowe works, foundation, is CEO. He's host, narrator, executive producer of How America Works, as well as everything else. He controls his own destiny. For that, I am jealous. <laughs> and you don't age. Well, that's very, very kind of you. Uh, what was the book? Uh, the Picture of Dorian Gray. Remember? Did you ever have to read that one? Not yet. Oh, God. Great, great story about a guy who never gets older, but there's a portrait of him, a picture like in the, in the attic, and that gets older. So if you really want to see what he looks like, you have to look at this magical picture. He looks like hell. Right. But in hey, real life, he's pretty good. That's me. Hey, Pete, can you find that picture or the book? <laughs> Would you? And just don't give me excuses. All right, Josh is busy. Uh, but, oh, you know, OJ being dead, we do remember where we were yeah. when the verdict came out, right? No, I remember more watching saying there's – the Knicks were playing the Rockets. Mm. And for New York, for the Knicks, haven't had a championship since 1972. Yeah. And they're in the finals against the Rockets. By the way, they were leading at 3-2 in the series. They have a chance to lock it up at Madison Square Garden. I wasn't there, but I was watching it. They evidently were going in the halls to watch the Bronco chase yeah. and leaving the finals against Hakeem Olajuwon against Patrick Ewing. That's how crazy it was in America. I can't beat that, but in terms of weirdness... I was in Dyersville, Iowa, shooting a segment for a project about the original Field of Dreams, right? So I'm in the cornfield where the actual owner of the actual piece of property where Costner shot the movie, I'm doing stand-ups with a farmer, right? I walk, was that for PM Magazine? Uh, no, it was for something even more obscure. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter. I'm there in the cornfield doing my best to make a living, and then I walk into this tiny little bed and breakfast where I was staying, and they have a black and white TV in my in my room, and I turn it on, and there's this slow motion SUV with people frantically describing what's happening, and it like when you're in Dyersville, trying to get your mind around the same image that's on every single channel. It, does, it, it like sears in your retina. It, Absolutely, and, yeah. And you're not quite sure why, but over time, man, the next couple of years, the Lance Ito singers, remember, and all the craziness and the T-shirts. and What a time, man. What a time. A.J. Cowlings was yeah. the driver. Who would think that guy crunched in the backseat of a white Bronco with A.J. Cowlings screaming that would eventually be found innocent? Who would have thought the first time the word Kardashian got seared wow. into our collective memory, was all around that, too. The dad. Yeah. So the crazy thing was, and I never really discussed this, the first person that I knew involved with that case that actually knew that he got away with murder that showed it was him. Yeah. Do you remember the exasperation on his face when yep. they found him innocent? Because they invited him into the law team, so no longer be a witness, mm -hmm. because he knew O.J. He hid O.J.'s clothes. They were gone. We never found out. He knew everything. O.J. probably confessed to him that he killed somebody. What do I do? Yeah. So how do we stop him from being a witness? He's part of the legal team. It was looking back, man. You know what's interesting? A lot of people over the last three or four years have gone through this kind of emperor's new clothes right. phase, right, where where they see a thing and they know that it's true, but they're being told something completely different. I don't care whether it's the withdrawal from Afghanistan. What a great – I know where you're going. Or the security of the border or, or – uh, Crime in New York City. Crime in New York City, uh, the best collegiate – female swimmer in the world who appears to have the full block and tackle, right? Like the things to be you, a man. The things you see, be, yeah. the things you see and the things you're told don't line up. That's the first time in my life on a national level I remember feeling that way. Unbelievable the way you have a way of putting things in perspective because now we never we now we're at the point where we don't believe anything. That's right. Right. We don't believe anything. And especially when people tell us we had the mayor in New York City come out and go, crime is down. It's the safest big city in America. We know that's not crime down. With people being thrown in front of trains, Venezuela and illegal immigrants beating up cops, right. a uh, CVS being shoplifted. When the cops come, they fight the guys and all five of them get out. Come on, are you I crazy? I know. Look, you can even look at it with with respect to the president, you know, I, I think everybody agrees that he's older than he's ever been and maybe not as sharp as he's ever been. So rather than acknowledging any of that, 
any diminishment at all. What we're told is he is just a paragon of of intellectual acuity uh, and physical prowess. He is on fire. We can't keep up with him. And, and, and it's like, well, wait, 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 wait. Really? I mean, you're going to go there. It's like a it's like you're buying a used car and you're haggling and it and it's got to go from, you know, Twenty thousand dollars. You start there. I'll start at two hundred, right? And I'll meet you somewhere around twelve five. Right. All right. But it's happening with every single thing. Every single thing. Look at him. There he is on the TV, just as innocent as can be. Except he's not. No. Right. And, and now we find out what happens in the afterlife. If he's in heaven, then we could have done anything. <laughs> right. I mean, there was. There really are no rules. Uh, right. I mean, listen. Uh, he was uh, beloved, probably top five most sought-after endorser until he became the most vilified man in the world. So people have to remember that. You want him on Wild World of Sports. You want him on the sideline. You want him on your scoreboard show. You want him in Naked Gun. You want him in Towering Inferno. Mm-hmm. You know, you wanted him in the Battle of the Network Stars. I- everywhere you go, this guy just embraced it. And I remember the first time I knew that this guy was not who he was. I was hosting a show with Jim Brown, the running back, Mm -hmm. and he did not like O.J. ever. And people just assumed because he moved on the Hollywood thing, Jim Brown was, in my view, the first athlete to break that barrier. I believe I'm right. And Jim's like, no, I don't don't care what he does. It's just that he's not who he comes off as. He's not – that's not the O.J. we know behind the scenes. And he also told me how sloppy he was getting on the golf course – openly doing coke in front of everybody, asking for fans to do it, you know, give it to them if they had it. Back then, coke was much more prevalent. It would be much more of a story. He goes, he's getting sloppy. And that was before, that was in, I started, stopped hosting a show with him in 93. A year later, he's killing, and I'm going, this guy was probably on a drug binge, doesn't even know what the hell he was doing. He's got the strength of 10 men. He is unbelievably. Devastating. Yeah. Devastating. And he runs through airports. As far as I know, uh, that was good with bad knees, but he ended up with the 49ers and was not the same player. Okay, I'm. can we talk about what we were originally going to talk about? Yeah, but it is worth dwelling on for a second because we're these are moments. You know, you don't really know it when they happen, but it's part of what makes a, a society a society and what makes Where people, you were when it happened. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, whether it's 9-11 or Kennedy's assassination or this kind of thing or, or maybe... Uh, you know, for me, most recently, March uh, 13th, 2020, you know, I did the last big public event in the country before the government shut down in, in California. And you don't you don't know it at the time. It's two weeks to flatten the curve. And then it's two months later. And then it's a year later. And then you're looking back going, holy two years, crap, yeah. man. What the hell? You How did that? Happen? What just happened? We haven't had we we've had time to think about OJ and process it. We haven't had time, Brian, to think about the lockdowns fully. We were so glad to get out of them. And now that we're out of them, we're so eager to move on. We haven't really unpacked it. Not really. I don't think. You're hundred percent out of everything. 9-11 being on the air at that time, it's indelible. No doubt about it. I don't want to diminish that. But the thing is we hit it, it was boom, reaction, war, 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 recovery. What are we doing? Election. Ele- got it. But with the pandemic, it was all unscripted, making up as you go along. And we feel so let down by the people in charge because they had no humility to say, we're not sure. But this is what we can say. They took discretion away from the American people, robbed us of our lives, our occupation, maybe fractured families forever, financially might never recover, businesses may never come back. And in the end, they were wrong by about 70 percent of it, including how it started and their reaction. And the anecdote was spoke called a... Uh, called a vaccine, which if you just said, listen, these are the plus and minuses. This is, I think it's going to help people who are severely obese who have under, but if for all the other 19 year old baseball players, you probably don't need to do it, but you can make your own decision. They petted us on the head. They told us what to do and vilified us for not doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, look, in the last 60 seconds. Furthering the divide in the country. All of that anger, all of that mistrust that you just articulated times 330 million. To some degree, every single person is still wondering who moved their cheese and how that happened. And what in the, it's like falling down the steps in slow motion, right? It's right. like, when is this going to stop? How, how, how much crazier is this going to get? And you know something? God bless the sense of humor. We're going to need one because the next eight months are going to be unlike any eight months I think we've ever lived Because you factor in elections, it's polarizing to a degree. Yeah. Although I do have some hope 
that people are beginning to break the Trump fever and just going to treat him like a candidate, which is so important. Treat Biden like a candidate. Treat him like a candidate. Like it's Bush Gore, whatever it is. You want the other guy to win. I understand it. But when the other guy wins, he may disagree with you, but he's not an alien. Mm. He's not. He should be treated just like somebody that maybe is a different party, not if, not from a different planet. Uh, but we'll take a time out. You have a way of putting things in perspective. Uh, and we have to add into all that well, at least one major criminal case uh, and I, maybe three more. It just wouldn't be the same without, without that. Kind without of thing. it. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.